Turn with me in your Bible to the book of Revelation, chapter 14. The book of Revelation, chapter 14, and I, I'm, I promise you we, we're not going to be here long. So, And I encourage you that uh, when we leave here today, make sure you take, write some of that stuff down. Go, go back, because want, we want to make sure, as uh, Brother Kenny talked about, about how all these different things that are happening in our world, that uh, that the people of God are going to be persecuted, are going to be uh, thrust into the main to the main light. All the attention is going to be uh, on the people of God. But what what is what are the people of God supposed to hold on to? What is it that that it, it helps? the people of God to endure persecution, to endure life's challenges. Even, even now, uh, we're, we're, pers we're not really experiencing persecution. What is it now about faith that is supposed to help us to endure life challenges? Sickness, death. What is it about faith? What is, about the, what is the word of God saying about faith that is supposed to help us to get through these tough times. Revelation chapter 14. Hold on. Hold on. <clears throat> Sorry. All right. We there? Revelation chapter 14, looking at verse 12. It says... Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. What is it about that particular verse that we're supposed to understand about the faith of Jesus, about these people who, who are obedient to the commandments of God and they have the faith of Jesus? What is it about that that's supposed to enrich uh, our minds and help us to understand and appreciate faith? Well, if you look at the chapter, going back to, to, to the earlier verses, we, we understand that, that the chapter is telling us about the three angels' message. But in the earlier verses, it talks about the, the triumph of the 144,000. And it describes them that, that there is no guile or deceit in their mouth. But then this, this is a people that is, has been raised up to reflect this the God's image. The, the people who are going to take this three angels message, a message of hope and salvation, a message of love, to prepare a people for the second coming of Jesus. Amen. But in, in, in the concluding verses of this chapter, we find that... Verse 12, it says that these very ones who are going to proclaim the three angels' message, these very ones are obedient to the commandments of God. These very ones have the very faith of Jesus. Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11. When you get there, say amen. Hebrews chapter 11. The title of the message today uh, is just, a, just an attempt here. Do you, we're even going to just scratch the surface, maybe. Understanding genuine faith that produces works. Hebrews chapter 11. Familiar text. says in verse 1, it says, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for in the evidence of of things not seen. Verse 2 it says, For by it the elders obtain a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. What is it about faith that's supposed to enrich us? That's, what is it about faith that we're supposed to understand. Right? According to the text, what does it say? 
Did you read it? Were you reading it at the same time? Uh, uh, Brother Barfield, go ahead. I'm saying that I, from what I understand of the text, it's saying that things that were invisible or not even in the mind were made tangible where you can see, touch, and feel. Right. Right. Uh, uh, Sister uh, Bonnie, did you have something you want to say? Um, I thought you were looking for something else. Um, when I think about the faith of Jesus and what little well, bit I've studied. Let me say this real quick. So let, let us, let's make our question. I'm not, I'm not saying this about you. I'm just saying generally. <coughs> let, let's make sure our questions are, are according to what we're looking at to, today. Oh, right, okay? Gotcha. Amen. So, okay. so go ahead. So go ahead. Christ, when he went to Calvary and he was going on that cross, he had the faith in his father that he would be raised from the dead and, the, and, and that his substitution was going to be enough. And in this verse, faith is the substance of things hoped for. We are hoping for a better place. We are hoping that by faith in God, he is going to get us through. Okay. So the faith of Christ, that he trusted his Father, we are being called to trust, even though we don't see we have generalizations of what's on the horizon, but we don't know. But we have to have faith and hold on to what we believe. Amen. All right. Uh, Brother Rick. We have that expectation for the things that will come to pass. Amen. Amen. So, 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 so watch this. What does the text say? Let's go back. Verse 3 says, through faith, we understood that the worlds were framed by what? The Word of God. The Word of God. So, where did the understanding of faith come from? The Word of God. Who? The Word, the Word of God. God. So, where do, where do we find where where the Bible tells us te tells us teaches us about the world being framed? Genesis. In the book what? In, in the book of Genesis, uh, which is also known as the book of the beginnings. Right? Is that what your Bible said? So it says, says what? Uh, says the worlds were framed by the word of God. Notice this. In, 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 in Revelation chapter 19, the Bible calls Jesus the word of God. You know, Paul talks explicitly about Jesus he declares Jesus as the creator. He realized, he understands, he understands that, that the word of God declares that Jesus is the creator. Right? He is the word of God. John, in the book of John, it talks about, about, the, about Jesus being the word made flesh and dwelling among us. It says that the word, he was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. The Revelator says again, in, again in 19, says that, that Jesus is the Word of God. It says, so, so that things, so with this understanding, we can understand that, so that things which are seen not, are, were not made by things which do not do appear, right? So that means that we didn't create ourselves, <laughs> right? We didn't create ourselves. That means that, that, we, that we learn, we understand that our existence, we learn that where? In the Word of God. You believe that? Amen. Is that in accordance with what you believe? Hmm? I mean, I'm asking, that's a serious question because we, we, we come here, we can come here every Sabbath, uh, we People go to church, whatever church you go to, and, and, and proclaim a understanding about faith and certain things, but they're not founded on the Word of God. Or, let me help you, they're not founded in the truth. Is the Word of God truth to you? Yes. So what is, what is it about, if we don't understand that just from that passage, that simple truth that God created. The world was framed by the God, the, the Word of God. It says that He spoke and it stood fast. Right? He spoke and it came into existence. Amen? Amen. Hebrews 
chapter 8. I'm sorry, sorry. Romans chapter 8. <laughs> Romans chapter 8. Say amen when you get there, please. Romans chapter 8. Uh, that's, that's good. Thank you, sir. I, I, I didn't say it. <laughs> uh, let's look at verse 24. Verse 24. Sister Bonnie, why don't you, why don't you read verse 24 and 25 for us? Loud and clear. Let me help. What chapter? Romans 8. 24. Romans 8, 24 and 25. Right, Romans 8, 24, 25. Mm -hmm. For we are saved by hope, but hope that is seen is not hope. For what a man seeth, why doth he get hope for? But if we hope for that which, excuse me, but if we hope for that we see not, then do we with patience wait for it. Mm. So what is what did John say in, 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 the pre in, in Revelation? He said, this is what? The patience of the saints. Right? Paul says, he says again, he says that, says, uh, he said, then do we with patience wait for it? Right? There, there is hope. Where, where are we getting this from? The word of God. Again, it says, he says, verse 25, he says, but if if we hope for that, we see not. So Sister Bonnie, she talked about, we wait, we, we, we're, our hope is for something better, right? We're, 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 our hope is, our faith is founded in Christ's second coming, right? Without that, then what do we, what do we have? All right? Without, without that truth, Without that knowledge, what is there to wait for? What is there to hope for? Life, life is, is meaningless at this point. Right? You believe that? You know, it's, I mean, there's people that believe that way. You know, this is, this is all we have to hope for. This is as good as it's going to get. As bad as, as the government, as bad as life is, uh, in in, in uh, with all the different things going on, some people believe that this is all we have to hope. For. This is as good as it's going to get. That's that's sad. That's sad. Turn with me in the book uh, to you in your Bibles to the book of James, chapter two. James chapter two. James chapter 2, when you get there, say amen. Amen. So we're not, we're not going to hold you long. But amen. Look at a few things here. James chapter 2, let's begin at verse 14. Notice what James says here. He says, what does it profit, my, uh, my brother? Though a man say he hath faith and hath not works, can faith save him? Verse 15, he says, if a brother or sister be naked and destitute of daily food, and one of you say unto him, depart in peace, be ye warm and filled, notwithstanding ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what does it profit? Why, why is James com comparing faith and food that we, that we need to eat? Tight. He's calling out like those hypocrites where he's like, you say you have faith, but you see that people are in need, and instead of assisting them in need and saying, go and be well, you're just like, oh yeah, go be well, you're going to be fine without any, you know, provisions or assistance. Yes, you can have faith, but as you said here, faith without works is dead. Right. So, but... What are we supposed to understand about that? What what is it about? What is the connection with faith and works? What, what is it about faith and works that James is trying to communicate here, uh, Sister Martha and then Sister Bonnie? You need to have the love of God in your heart in order to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you have to have the love of God in your heart in order to bring others to this faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Yeah. 
Uh, so it's fine. Um, people who are hurting, and you have this great message to give to them, cannot hear it. If, if I'm hungry, if I've got kids and no daddy to provide for them, you're not connecting with me where I am. Mm -hmm. So this message might be a great message, but I got bigger issues because it's about life and death for them. Mm -hmm. So, and Christ himself came. What did he do nine times out of, it was, he, he, he met them where they were, took care of a need, and that showed such a love, yes. such an acceptance. Mm -hmm that they were drawn immediately to him yes. with love. Now they can hear what he has to say because they know he cares. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. Look, 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 let me finish reading this here. Then, then I'm, I'm going to jump in here. Verse 17, he says, Even so, even so faith, it hath, it, if it have not works, is dead being alone. Right? He says, Yea, a man, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show you my faith by my works. Right? So what you're saying, what you said was true. But notice this. That faith, your faith in God will produce works. Faith produces works. Yeah, we must have the love of God but faith, true faith, founded in the word of God, founded in the truth, true faith will cause you to work. Uh, in Sabbath school, uh, I made a comment is that you, we, all, we all realize that it's cold outside, amen? Right? Did anyone come dressed like it's 80 degrees outside? <laughs> no, right? <laughs> we didn't come dressed like that. Faith will cause you, it will cause you to live to you will live your life based on what you believe. Right? Your your actions testify of what you believe. Right? It's same the same way as with faith. Faith says that uh, uh, using using uh, Bonnie's example, uh, the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus urged him to meet people where they where they were, satisfy their need, and then bid them follow me. Is that what you is that what your Bible said? Yes. yes. The faith of Jesus. Revelation 18 said, These these people, here is the patience of the saint. These are they that have they keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. So they weren't just going out to preach the three angels' message. What were they doing? They were living. They were living the three angels' message. They were living. Their their their, their actions testified that they had the faith of Jesus. They weren't just looking at at, at all the world events. But they were meeting people where they were. They were meeting people who, who, who did not know or understand the word of God. They were meeting people who, who were starving, people who were homeless. Yes. People who were naked, Matthew 25. He says, as much as you have done this unto these, you've done it unto me. Amen. Notice this. Manuscripts, uh, uh, letters and manuscripts, volume, volume six. Uh, let's see here. Yeah, um, paragraph sixteen through eighteen. Notice, it says, now genuine faith always works by love. Is is love included in <laughs> in faith? Yes. Right. Yes. Check this out. Right. Just justification by faith. Righteousness by faith. What are they? Hmm? Say what? No. It's love, right? But check this out. It's their their actions. Oh, right. love is actions, it's not right? words. Their actions. Right? We we're, we're, we're justified not by our works. 
we don't live our lives righteously because it's our righteousness. It's Christ's righteousness, right? But it's their actions because of our faith. Notice, Jesus said uh, about people that he, he recognized faith. He says that, he says, being done unto you because of your faith. Think about it. Why did Jesus mention uh, about certain ones? It says, says, I have not seen such great faith in this person. I have not seen such great faith in this person. Because faith is important. We talk about, hey, you know, and we need to pray. Amen. We need that communing time with God. But prayer and communion is a, is a response to faith. The, the desire to, to seek the face of God is a response to what to, to the word of God that we've under, come to understand. Amen? Amen. Because the, it's, the Bible says out of, out of God's mouth says cometh knowledge and understanding. When, when we understand the word of God and, and our faith is established, we respond Faith is, is our faith is as a we, we respond with a certain action. Does that make sense? It says this, check us out. It says, when you look to Calvary, Calvary, it is not to quiet your soul in the non-performance of duty, not to compose yourself to sleep, but to create faith in Jesus. Faith that will work purifying the soul from all the slime of selfishness. When, I'll get to you. When we lay hold on Christ by faith, our work has but just begun. Faith is just the beginning. Amen? Amen. Every man has corrupt and sinful habits that must be overcome through vigorous warfare. What warfare? Hmm? It's a spiritual warfare. Right? Paul talks about the, this warfare. Every soul is required to fight the fight of faith. And one is a follower of Christ. He can, if one is a follower of Christ, he cannot be sharp in, in deal. He cannot be hard, hard hearted, devoid of sympathy. Hmm? He cannot be coarse in his speech. He cannot be full of uh, pomposity and, and self-esteem. He cannot be overbearing, nor can he use harsh words and censor and condemn. If he has the faith of Jesus. The labor of love springs from the, from the word of faith. Bible, Bible religion means constant work. Okay, here we go. It says, uh, hold on one second. Okay, it says, we are to be zealous of good works, be careful to maintain good works, and the true witness is, I know thy works. You, you had a question on no, uh, oh, Sister Taish. I forgot what you said. I liked it, but I forgot what you said. It said prayer and communion is. Their, their, their actions, their responses to something, right? When, 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 when you, Paul says this in, in uh, uh, we read it this, read it this morning, uh, in, in Romans chapter 10, familiar passage, right? It says, says, faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the word, of God. the word of God, right? The Bible says that God giveth there, man, a measure of faith, faith. faith. right? Mm -hmm. So when Jesus talks about the Faith being as a grain of mustard seed, what does that mean? Why, why does he compare our faith to a, a mustard seed? Well, a mustard seed is supposed to be one of the smallest seeds, but when it grows up into a tree, it's a very huge, huge tree. Right. So we so, have a little faith, but as we're exercising that faith, what, what, it wait, should wait, grow. Say it again. As we're exercising Exercise. that faith, it should be growing. So, so the, our faith needs to be exercised. How, how is faith exercised? Doing. Hmm? Doing. Doing? 
Reading. What? Reading. Reading. Yeah. Answers to prayer. Huh? Answers to prayer. Answers to prayer. Right. Generally, intercessory prayer. We're praying for someone or something, mm -hmm. and God's showing us. Oh yeah. Right. So, oh, yeah. watch this. When when the children of Israel, uh, Sister Catherine, what you got? Would would trials and tribulations? Mm, yeah. There you go. When when the children of Israel by Moses, uh, God God sent Moses into Israel right to lead them out of Egypt. You think their faith should their faith have been increased? Yes. <laughs> right. What did happen in Egypt? <laughs> huh? What did happen in Egypt? Right. Well. They just had, they just, I mean, 400 years of bondage. Right? Yeah. Hard labor. The Bible says that they, they, they serve with, with rigor. Right? 400 years of, of, of being pushed around and and degraded and demeaned and and forced forced to work against uh, against what you said about what you believe. And yet here here comes God. God's Raises up Moses, sends sends him into Egypt, said, "Leave my people out." Should their faith been increased? Yes. Hmm. How about the, the Hebrew boys, right? Mm -hmm. They the, the people had just been in, uh, 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 put in bondage, right, in the Bab in Babylon, right? Because of they their reluctance. Because of their stance against idolatry and the wickedness that was taking place, and they found themselves in the in the burning fiery furnace, right? God, God comes. Jesus comes down, meets them in the fire, and 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 and, and covers them, but that they're, they're not burned. No smell of smoke, nothing. You think their faith was their faith increased? You said trials and tribulations. It's trials and tribulation that works. Man, okay. It's, tri it's our trials and tribulation also. It's, it's not just a matter of because we, you know, uh, well, hey, you know, uh, thank you, Lord, for, you know, because we're able to eat every day. Right? That doesn't really work to, to increase your faith. Right? To strengthen your faith. It's when, it's when faith God works through, God requires our faith, right, that he can reveal himself to us as a deliverer, Mercy. as a healer, Amen. right, as a provider, right, as a comforter, as a friend. Paul talks about, talks about Abraham being, he's, he's considered what, the friend of God. faith of Jesus. While it is true that our busy activities will not themselves ensure salvation, it is also true that faith which unites us to Christ will stir the soul to activity. True faith in Jesus will cause you to work. All right? We're not just we're not supposed to just come to church and sit on our hands and do nothing. When the faith of Jesus, when when the love of God, right? She, she uh, Sister White points talks about the cross. When we when we look at the cross, it's not to, it's not to cause us to to, to uh, respond in a negative manner, but it, it should compel us into the to, to the activity of salvation. Right? To, to working for the salvation of others. It should cause us to want to go work. Let's look at, uh, we're still in the book of James. Look at, uh, look at verse 21. It says, Was not Abraham, who? Abraham. Was not Abraham our father justified by works when he had Offered Isaac his son upon the altar, seeing thou how how faith seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by works was faith made perfect. Amen. Was it? Is that, is that yes? No? Yes. Verse 23 says, 
It says, and the scripture was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God and it was imputed or counted unto him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God. Amen. The faith of Jesus? Him, him, Abraham's faith in God? Belief in God? Belief in, in the promises of God? Declared him as what? Righteous and the friend of God. Verse. Signs of the Time, May 19th, 1898, paragraph 7 through 9. It says this uh, about the passage we just read. It says, So the Apostle James saw the dangers would arise in presenting the subject of justification by faith, and he labored to show the genu that genuine faith cannot exist without corresponding works. What, what, what is it that we're supposed to understand about faith? About even the faith of Jesus. The faith of Jesus will compel us to work. The experience, the experience of Abraham is presented. It said, thus genuine faith goes as genuine work. Thus genuine faith does as a genuine work in the believer. It says faith and disobedience I'm sorry, faith and obedience bring a solid, valuable experience. Faith and obedience and what? Faith and obedience, we, we read in Revelation what? It said that they were they keep the commandments of God and faith, faith of Jesus. the faith of Jesus. It says there is a belief that, watch this, there is a belief that is not a saving faith. He says, the word declares that the devils believe and tremble. The so-called faith that does not work by love and purify the soul will not justify any man. Says ye see, uh, says the apostle, how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Abraham believed God, and how how do we know that? How do we know that he believed? How how do we know that he believed? Because of because his works. Right? He obeyed the word of God. Amen? Check us out. It says, um, okay. It says, again, his works testify to the character of his faith. And his faith was accounted to him for righteousness. We need the faith of Abraham in our day to lighten the darkness that gathers around us. Shutting out the spirit the sweet sunlight of God's love and dwarfing spiritual growth. Without faith, we can't grow. No. Not why do you why do you think Peter go to go to uh go to Second Peter real quick. Second Peter chapter one. Second Peter chapter one. Some someone read read to me. Verse 5. And beside this, giving all diligence, add to your faith. That's what? Virtue. Knowledge. And to your virtue, knowledge. What's the first thing? Uh, diligence. Faith. Yeah. <laughs> add to your faith. Right? He says, add to faith. You can't add spiritual graces without faith. <laughs> That's right. All right? It, Peter is talking about here, he's talking about, he said, don't look at it. He says, he says that you're supposed to add to your faith diligence. And then he says, to faith, to your faith, he says, add to your faith, oh, I'm sorry, let me back up. He says, and beside this, giving all diligence, right? He says, add to your faith virtue. He says, and to virtue, knowledge and to knowledge temperance, and to temperance patience, and to patience godliness, and to godliness brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness charity. If you're not hearing the word of God, how can you grow in spiritual graces? Hmm? How, can we be, how can we be prepared for the time of trouble? 
Hmm? We need to have the love of the truth in us. Amen. Amen. But how do you know that if you don't if you're not reading the word of God? Hmm? Titus. You said second Peter. Second Peter chapter one. Uh second Peter chapter one. Uh, five through seven. All right. So Peter tells us that that that, that there these are spiritual graces that we that we need to obtain in our walk of sanctification, right? But it starts with faith, and if and we don't have true genuine faith, we cannot grow. Uh, Sister Martha. And after we have that faith, we need to keep it. Amen. 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 Yeah. He says, he says this uh, in verse 8. He says, he says, for if if these things be in you and abound, says they make you that ye shall neither what be barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. Without faith, you can't grow. Yeah, without faith, you can't grow. Notice this here. In um, the faith I live by, it says on uh, April 19th, uh, faith demonstrated by works. It says this. He says, um, it says the part, the part women, the part man has to act in the salvation of the soul is to believe on Christ, on Jesus Christ, as his personal redeemer, not for some other man, but for his own self. We can't save anybody. We can't work to save anyone else if we haven't received him for ourselves, right? What? Why do you think Jesus says in Mark chapter one? It says. Believe the gospel. You have to first believe it for yourself. Christ imputes, or uh, uh, yeah, Christ imputes his perfection and righteousness to the believing sinner when he does not continue in sin, but turns from transgre transgression to the obedience of the commandment. He imparts his perfection and righteousness as a result of faith. It says, while God cannot, while God can be just and yet justify the sinner through the merits of Christ, no man can cover his soul with the with the garments of Christ's righteousness while practicing known sin or neglecting known duty. We're not working. <laughs> is that is that neglecting known duty? If, if we if we know that we're supposed to be working and we're we're not, that's neglecting known duty. Wow. We're wrapping this up. Here. We're wrapping this up. Uh, let's see here. Faith and works are two oars. Notice it. Faith and works are two oars which must be which must use equally. Faith and works are two oars which we must use equally if we would press our way up, up the stream against the current of unbelief. And yet, there's, there's, there's a teaching that that we don't have to do it. All we have to do is just believe. I remember years ago when when I first uh, started going to church and started trying to read my Bible. Uh, I think it, I think it's in there uh, in Romans chapter ten. I think it is. Uh, it's a passage in there. They they, they they tell you to read. Let's see here. Uh, wrong book. Okay, this is Romans chapter 10. Let me see here. Um, uh, 
Let's see here. 2017. Uh, what is it? It's a, it's a passage that says, that if you believe, if you believe with your heart, it says, uh, oh, here it is, verse 9. He says, it says, uh, the lab, it's, well, it says this, he says, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt, and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. Right? There, there's a teaching that says that all you have to do is believe. That's it. You don't have to do anything. Just believe. Well, part of it is, is it is true. You have to have faith. But the teaching is, 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 is only halfway. Right? It says because, because of, of what we believe, because of our belief in, in Christ, because of our faith, we're going to work for other people. I, that's, that's all throughout the scriptures. Right? That's all throughout the scriptures. Lastly, this. Notice this. It says, uh, it says this. Okay. Closing this. It says, it says, we need the faith of Jesus in our day. I read this earlier. But it says, we need the faith of Jesus now to lighten the darkness that gathers around us, shutting out the sweet sunlight of God's love and dwarfing spiritual growth. Our faith should be prolific of good works. For faith without works is dead. Amen? Amen. 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 Next, next time, we're going to kind of continue uh, dealing with this. But... Uh, I encourage you, you know, go back. Check check what you what you already believe about. Right? And make sure that, that, that what you believe about faith is founded in scripture. Amen? Amen. Let's pray. Father in heaven. Lord, we just thank you, Lord, for this opportunity to study your word. We thank you, Lord, for